The seeing object is a fundamental part of a C++ I/O input output operations, allowing programs to interact with users by reading input from the keyboard. So seeing stands for character input. It is the instance of the IS stream class in C++, and it is used to retrieve input from the standard input device, which is usually the keyboard. To use seeing, the IO stream header file must be included in the program. So pound sign include, then we have an angle bracket IO stream. So seeing is used in conjunctions with the extraction operator greater than greater than to read input from the user. Seeing can be used to read multiple inputs in a single line. Seeing attempts to interpret the user's input according to the type of the variable it is trying to store the input in. If the user enters an incompatible type, for example, entering text when the number is expected, this can cause errors or unexpected behavior. This program prompts the user to enter the length and width of a rectangle. It then calculates the rectangle's area and displays the result on the screen. Pound sign include IO stream. This includes the necessary header file to use the input and output stream object. Using namespace std, this allows us to use elements in the std namespace without prefixing them with std double colon. Integer length with area. These are the integer variables used to store the length with of the rectangle and the calculated area. The program use cout to display messages to the user, asking for the length and width of the rectangle. It then use cin to read the user's input and store it in the length and the width variables. Area equal length multiply width. This line calculates the area of the rectangle by multiplying the length and width. See out extraction operator less than less than the area of the rectangle is so this line is enclosed in a double quote though so that's a string. Then less than less than area area is the variable which store the value of the calculated area. Then continue less than less than, and the inside the double code is a period and a backslash n. So the period will be printed, and the backslash n is the new line. Return zero semicolon. So this line signifies successful program termination. It is good to have comments at the beginning of the program to describe its purpose. It is advisable to check for negative or invalid inputs and handle such cases gracefully, which this example doesn't cover. When seeing is used with the extraction operator greater than greater than, it attempts to read the user's input and convert it into the type of the variable that is provided. In this example, seeing expects the user to enter an integer because height is、uh, declared as an integer. If the user's input can be successfully converted to the type of the variable, seeing performs its conversion automatically. For instance, if the user enters ten, seeing will will store ten in the height variable. If the user enters a value that cannot be converted to the expect type, for example, entering text when an integer is expected, seeing will enter a fail state, and the program may not behave as expected. For example, if the user enters ten ten instead of the 
numerical ten, seeing will fail to convert this input to an integer int, and the value of height will remain uninitialized. It is important to check the state of seeing after an input operation to ensure that the input was valid and the conversion was successful. This can be done using seeing dot fail function or other related functions, and it typically involves writing condition statements to handle errors. A prompt is a message displayed on the screen to instruct the users to enter specific data. It guides the user on what type of input the program ex is expecting at that moment. The prompts are essential for user-friendly design. They inform the user what the program is expecting and how to interact with it. Without prompts, user might be confused about what they are supposed to do next. The see out object is used to display prompts. Before each seeing statement, a corresponding see out statement should be used to display a clear and informative prompt. For example, see out how tall is the room, then see in height. So in this example, the program displays the message "How tall is the room?" to instruct the user to enter the height of the room. The user's input is then read and stored in the variable height. It is good practice to end prompts with a space, as in this example, or a colon and a space, uh, like a double quote colon space. To clearly separate the prompt from the user's input, seeing can be used to read multiple values in a single line of input. In this example, seeing expects the user to enter two integers. The first integer entered will be stored in height, and the second in width. When entering multiple values. They must be separated by space or a new line character. For instance, enter ten space twenty will assign ten to height and twenty to width. The order in which values are entered is significant. The first value entered is assigned to the first variable specified, the second value to the second variable, and so on. It is crucial that the user knows the expected order of inputs, which should be clearly communicated by the program via prompt. If the user enters fewer values than expected, or if the、uh, values entered cannot be converted to the expected type, seeing will enter a fail state. This program prompts the user to enter the length and the width of a rectangle, calculates the rectangle's area based on the user input, and displays the result on the screen. In the main function, we have an integer length width area variable, and the program uses see out to display messages to the user, clearly instructing them to enter the length and the width. Of the rectangle separately by space, and the seeing greater than greater than length greater than greater than width. This line reads two integers from the user in a single line. The first integer entered is assigned to length, and the second to width. Area equal length multiply width. This line calculates the area of the rectangle by multiplying the length and the width. And the see out the area of the rectangle is area the e n d l. So this line displays the calculated area to the user, and moves the cursor to the next line using e n d l. And the return zero. This line signifies successful program termination. This program demonstrates how seeing can be used to read multiple values of different data types from a single line of user input, and then it displays these values back to the user. 
So in the main program, integer whole, an integer variable to store the whole number entered by the user. Double fractional, a double variable to store the fractional number entered by the user. Char ladder, so a character variable to store the single character entered by the user. The program used cout to display a message to the user, clearly instructing them to enter an integer, a double in the character. This is with the cout, enter an integer, a double in the character, do. Seeing extraction whole, extraction fractional, extraction ladder. This line reads three values from the user in a single line. The first value is expected to be an integer, the second a double, and the third a character. The program then uses cout to display each of the values entered by the user, labeling them appropriately. So the cout, the whole colon, then the value, fractional colon value, and the ladder colon value. So return zero is the end of successful termination. An expression is a combination of literals, variables, operators, and the function calls that can be evaluated to produce a single value. Complex expressions involve multiple mathematical operators and can, can combine literals, variables, and the function calls. For example, area equal 2 multiply pi multiply radius. So in this example, 2 multiply pi multiply radius is a complex expression that calculates the circumference of a circle given its radius. Complex expressions can be used on the right side of an assignment statement to compute a value and store it in a variable. So area in equal length multiply width, we have seen this before. Complex expressions can be used directly with cout statements to compute and display a value. For example, cout less than less than border is less than less than 2 multiply in the round parentheses L plus W. So in this example, 2 multiply the parenthesis L plus W calculates the parameter of a rectangle with length L and the width W, and this value is printed directly. The order in which operators are evaluated in complex expressions is determined by their precedence. Parentheses can be used to explicitly specify the order of operations. When an expression contains multiple operators, the order in which they are evaluated is determined by their precedence levels. This is important for understanding how an expression will be evaluated. Unary negation, the minus sign, evaluated first from left to right. It changes the sign of the operand. Multiplication, division, and the modulus, evaluated next from left to right. These operators have higher precedence than addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction evaluated last from left to right. These operators have the lowest precedence among the ones listed. So consider the expression 2 plus 2 multiply 2 minus 2. First multiplication 2 multiply 2 equals 4. Then addition 2 plus 4 equals 6. Finally, subtraction 6 minus 2 equals 4. So we are giving the expression 4 plus 17 modulus 2 minus 1. In this expression, we have an addition, subtraction, and the modulus. Modulus has higher precedence than addition and the subtraction. Addition and subtraction have the same precedence and are evaluated from left to right. 
So first we evaluate seventeen modulus two, which calculates the remainder of seventeen divided by two. So seventeen modulus two equals one. The expression now becomes four plus one minus one. Then we evaluate four plus one from left to right, which equals five. And finally, we evaluate five minus one, which equals four. So the final result of the expression is four. The order in which operators are evaluated in an expression is determined by their precedence and the associativity. Precedence is the priority of different operators, while associativity is the order in which operators of the same precedence are evaluated. Unary negation has right to left associativity. This means that in an expression like a negate, then you have a parenthesis, then negate x. So the inner negation is evaluated first. The binary operators like a multiplication, division, modulus, addition, and a minus actually have left to right associativity. So this means that when multiple operators of the same precedence appear in an expression, they are evaluated from left to right. Parentheses can be used to explicitly specify the order of operations, overriding the default precedence and associativity rules. In the first example, multiplication is performed before addition and subtraction, due to its higher precedence. For the second example, parentheses change the order, causing addition to be performed before multiplication and subtraction. Then the third example, the parentheses cause subtraction to be performed before multiplication and addition. In the fourth example, parentheses are used to control the order of both addition and subtraction, and then multiplication is performed. Multiplication between variables or values must be explicitly indicated using the multiplication operator. So, to calculate the area of the rectangle with length l and the width w, we write area equal L multiply W, not area equal LW. So C++ doesn't have a built-in exponential uh, uh, operator like. To calculate powers, we used POW function from the math library. For example, to calculate the area of a square with side lengths S, we write area equal POW, that's a function name. Then we pass the parameters. The first parameter is S, which is the length. Two is the power. So it's not like an area equal S squared. So you must convert the algebraic expression into the C++ equivalent and using the appropriate operators. In C++, operations are performed between operands of the same type. If operands are of different types, C++ will automatically convert one of them so that both operands are of the same type. This process is known as a type conversion or type coercion. When you perform an operation between two different types, C++ will implicitly convert one of the type to match the other. This is often called type promotion. So implicitly type co conversion can lead to unexpected results, especially when working with integer and the floating uh, point types. For the explicitly type conversion or casting to control the type conversion, um, we can use um, Type casting. For example, to get a floating point result from the division of two integers, we can cast one or both integers to double. 
and the result will be double. We will talk about this later. So implicit type conversion can lead to loss of data. For example, when the double is converted to an integer, the fractional part is lost. Different data type have a varying capacities to hold value. The capacity is determined by the amount of memory allocated for each type. So long double is the largest of the floating point types capable of representing every very large and uh, very small decimal numbers with the highest precision. Then double hold large floating point numbers but with less precision in the range than long double. Float, the smallest of the floating point types capable of representing decimal number but with less precision in the range than double. Unsigned long can hold large positive integer values because it is unsigned, it cannot represent negative values, but it can represent larger positive values than long. Long capable of holding large positive and negative integer values. Unsigned INT can hold positive integer values up to a certain limit. It has a larger positive range than INT because it doesn't represent negative numbers. INT, the standard integer type capable of representing both positive and negative values, but with a smaller range than long. Type coercion, automatically conversion of one data type to another within an expression. C++ does this to make type compatible for an operation. Promotion is upgrading a variable to a higher data type for example, from integer to double. This is done to prevent data loss during calculations. Demotion is down, downgrading a variable to a lower data type, for example, from double to integer. This can lead to loss of information as it often involves truncating decimal part or reducing the range of values. Capture short and unsigned short are automatically promoted to INT integer when involved in expression, enhancing calculation precision. For the mixed type operations, when operating on values of different data types, the lower ranked type is promoted to the type of the higher ranked one. This ensures that the operation is performed without unintended data loss. When using the assignment operator, the type of the expression on the right side will be converted to match the type of variable on the left side. This might lead to data loss if the left side variable is a lower ranked type. So understanding these automatic conversions is crucial for writing accurate and efficient C++ code as they can affect the outcomes of calculations and the assignments. Overflow occurs when a value assigned to a variable exceeds its maximum capacity. Underflow occurs when a value is below the minimum capacity that the variable can hold. So when overflow or underflow occurs, the variable might wrap around its set of possible values, leading to an unexpected result. Different systems may handle these situations differently. Some might display a warning or error, error message, halt the program, or continue execution using the incorrect value. Static underscore cast is used to explicit type conversion in C++. It allows for controlled, safe conversion between data type. For example, to perform two division, not integer division, 
between integers. We can convert them to double. Double n and m equal stati a static underscore cast. Then in the bracket we specify double. And on the then we have a uh, parenthesis y two minus y one, and divide by the parenthesis x two minus x one. So this ensures we get a decimal result even when using integers. To print the ASCII values of a character, we have a C H A R C H equal uh, double upper C, which enclosed in a single quote. So we see out insertion C H insertion is then insertion then static underscore cast then in the bracket integer. Then we have a ch in the parentheses. So this output c is sixty seven, showing the ASCII values of c. So static underscore cast is a powerful tool for manual type conversion, allowing for precise control over data type in various operations. This provided program calculates the average number of books a user plans to read per, mo per month. So the books in the month are declared as integer. Without static underscore cast, if the user enters thir uh, 30 books in the 7 months, the program would output 4 books per month. With static underscore cast, the program correctly output 4.28571 books per month. So when two integers are divided, the result is also an integer. This means that any fractional part is truncated and the result might not be what you expect. The static underscore cast that you put in type in the expression is the way to explicitly <coughs> convert types in C++. It tells the compiler to treat this expression as being of type, uh, the type you specified. Traditional way of casting types in C, which is also supported in C++, uh, we have the syntax, the type name, the expression. So for example, C out lesson lesson ch ch should be a character data type then lesson lesson and in the double code yes then lesson the lesson and the integer in the parentheses then ch so this tells the compiler to treat ch as an integer for this operation an older style of casting in C++ that used the type name and the value in the parentheses. So the syntax becomes the type name, then the expression is inside the parentheses. So for example, C out lesson lesson CH lesson lesson is lesson lesson the integer, then the CH is inside the parentheses. So it's very similar to C style, but with a syntax that looks more like a function call. Static underscore cast in <clears throat> modern C++. So this is a preferred way of casting in modern C++. The syntax is a static underscore cast. And in the bracket, we have type, the name, then the expression, uh, we have this uh, expression inside the parentheses. So for example, C out lesson lesson CH lesson lesson is lesson lesson static underscore cast. Then we put integer in the bracket and the CH in the parentheses. So it is more visible in the code, making it easier to spot and is safer than the other methods. 
So why static underscore cache is preferred? Because it is clearly in the more explicit than the other method. You can assign a single value to multiple variables in one statement. For example, x equal y equal z equal 5. So this statement assigns the value 5 to variable x, y, and z. The assignment operator returns the value that was assigned. This allows us to chain assignments together. The assignment operator associates from right to left. So in this example, x equal parenthesis y equal then parenthesis z equal 5. So that means that the z is assigned the value 5 first. Then y is assigned the value of z. And finally, x is assigned the value of y. The statement sin equal sum plus 1 is a simple way to increment the value of the variable sum by 1. Here, the current value of sum is added to 1, and the result is then assigned back to sum. The statement sum equals sum plus 1 can be simplified using the combined assignment operator plus equal as sum plus equal 1. So this statement adds 1 to the current value of sum and assigns the result back to sum. C++ supports several combined assignment operators using plus equal, minus equal, multiplication equal, division equal, and the modulus equal. For example, z multiply equal 10 is the equivalent to z equal z multiply 10. We can control the appearance of the output, such as size, position, and the number of digits displayed. This is especially useful when we want our output to be more readable or to align in a specific way. To use output formatting functions, we need to include the io-manip header file in our program. So pound sign include inside the bracket io-manip. The setwx function set the width of the output field to x spaces. It is a one-time manipulator, meaning it only affects the next value displayed, not subsequent values. For example, we have a see out statement. You see out, set w, 10, then see out, uh, then less and less than the hello, which is a string inside the double quote, then less than less than the word in a double quote. So it will print hello in a field of width 10, but word will be printed with the default width. This program demonstrates how to use the setw manipulator to align columns of numbers in the output. We have nine integer variables which we want to display in three rows, each containing three numbers. So set w6 sets the width of the output field to six spaces. For example, c out less than less than set w6 less than less than num1 will print the value num1 in a field that is six character wild. So in the program, each number is printed in a field of width 6. This ensures that all numbers line up vertically, creating a neat and organized table-like format. The setw manipulator affects only the next value that is displayed. After that, the field width reverses to its default. So in this program, the set w6 is used before each number to ensure that each number has its own field width of 6. 
The output of this program will be three rows of numbers, each aligned with in columns, due to the set W six manipulators. Unlike set W, which affects only the next value that is displayed, some manipulators inside IO Manip continue to affect values until they are explicitly changed. So when fixed is used, floating point values are displayed using decimal notations. When used with fixed, the set position X manipulator sets a number of digits to be displayed after the decimal point to X. Without fix, it sets a number of uh, significant digits displayed to X. The show point manipulator forces the output to always display the decimal point for floating point values, even if the fractional part is zero. And these manipulators can be combine, combined together to achieve specific formatting styles. This C++ program prompts the user to enter sales amounts for three days, calculates the total sales, and then displays these amounts in a neatly formatted table. The program uses CIN to get sales amounts for three different days from the user. The program calculates the total sales by adding the sales amounts to of all three days. The program uses IOMANIP library to format the output. Set position 2 and the fixed are used to format the floating point numbers to two decimal places. Set W sets the width of the output field to A spaces, aligning the numbers neatly under each other. The program outputs a table with headers and the sales amount for each day as well as the total sales amount. So this program highlights how set precision fixed and the set W can be combined to create a well-organized table of sales data. Here's the stream manipulator's description. And we have seen set W fixed, set precision, and show point. And for the left, it causes subsequent output to be left justified. And for the right stream manipulator, it causes subsequent output to be right justified. Seeing with the extraction operator um, is commonly used to read input from the user. The issues with this is it stops reading input as soon as it encounters a white space character, for example, space, tab, or new line. It ignores leading white space characters, which might not always be the desired behavior. For example, if the user enters Jung, space, do, and we use seeing extraction name, uh, name is a string uh, variable. So we'll only store strings in the name variable. The solution is we use getLine function. GetLine is a function that reads an entire line of text, including white space characters, until it encounters a new line character. It is included in the string header files. GetLine is a standard C++ function that reads an entire line of text from the input stream, including white space characters, until it encounters a new line character. It is included in the string header file. This program demonstrates how to use the GetLine function to read character data 
into string objects. The program asks the users for their name and the city they live in. It uses get line to read the entire line of the out input for both questions, allowing for names in the city with spaces in them. String name city. Declares two string variables, name and city. Get line. Then inside the parentheses, you pass in C in and the name. So it reads the entire line of input from the user until enter key is pressed and start it in the name variables. So get line C in city. It does the similar thing for the city variable. See out, less and less than hello, then the name E N D L. So output a greeting message using the name the user entered. See out, you live in city E N D L. Output the city the user. Lives in, so it allows for input with spaces, making it ideal for reading full name, addresses, or any multi-word input. It reads input until a new line character is encountered, which means it reads the entire line of input. We often need to read a single character from the user. And there are multiple ways to do it,、uh, using the seeing for reading characters. So the seeing with the greater than greater than operation skips over leading white space characters like space, tab, or line breaks. So this means if the user enters a space or presses enter, the seeing will wait for a non white space character. We also can use the seeing dot get for reading characters. So seeing dot get, and in the parentheses you pass in ch. So read the next character entered from the standard input, including the white space characters. So this function will read exactly one character, whether it is a white space character or not. So the benefits of seeing dot get, it will read the very next character from the input stream, including the white space characters. It makes seeing dot get ideal for situations where the exact user input, including space or new line characters, is important. Seeing dot get is a simple and effective way to pause a program. It waits for the user to enter a character, often the enter key, before the program continues. This C plus plus program demonstrates three different ways to use seeing dot get to pause a program. The program waits for the user to press enter three times, pausing the program each time. So there are three ways to use seeing dot get in this example. First is seeing dot get, then ch inside the parentheses. It reads a character into a variable ch and the pause until enter is pressed. Ch equal seeing dot get, then inside the parentheses it's empty. So assigns the character reads read to variable ch and pauses until enter is pressed. Also, we can have seeing dot get empty parentheses. So pauses program until enter is pressed, but doesn't store the character read. Using seeing greater than greater than and the seeing dot get in the same program can lead to unexpected behavior. After seeing less greater than greater than reads the formatted input, 
It leaves the new line character produced by pressing the enter in the input buffer. This new line character can be unintentionally read by a subsequent seeing.get, causing it uh, to appear as if seeing.get is skipped. So seeing.ignore is used to remove or ignore characters from the input buffer, thus preventing the issues that arise when mixing seeing greater than greater than and seeing.get. So seeing.ignore discards the next character in the input buffer if available. And seeing.ignore 10, then in the single code, you have a new line, which is backslash n. It discards the next 10 characters in the input buffer or until a new line character is encountered, whichever comes first. For example, after reading an integer with seeing greater than greater than, you want to read a line of text with a seeing.get. So without seeing.ignore, the seeing.get might immediately read the leftover new line character from the input buffer, making it seem like it didn't wait for user input. For example, you input uh, employing ID as integer, then after that you want to input the employee's name and using the seeing get. So the seeing get without seeing that ignore uh, might immediately read the new line character without inputting the name. So it's a good habit to use seeing.ignore after seeing greater than greater than when you plan to use seeing.get later in the program to read a line of text. To get the number of a characters in a string, we use the length function. For example, we have a string variable string state equal Texas. Texas is in quotes in double code. Then integer size equal state dot length. So this code set size to five, which is the number of characters in the string Texas. Concatenation is the operation of joining two strings end to end. Here we have uh, three string variables. So we join greeting one, and we use plus sign, name one. Name one is also string, and the result will be assigned to a string variable greeting two. And the next example, we have uh, the plus equal sign. The plus equal sign operator can be used to append one string to the end of another one. So we append name two to greeting one, then we can say greeting one plus equal name two. So strings in C++ have built-in functions and the operators that make it easy to find their links and concatenate them. The links function returns the number of characters in a string, and the plus sign and the plus equal operators allow us to concatenate strings. C++ provides a library of mathematical functions which are declared in the CMath header file. These functions typically take double as input and returns a double value. So sine x returns the sine of x where x is a radiance. And the 
cosine x returns the cosine of x, and the tan x returns the tangent of x. And we also have a square root x return the square root of x. Log x returns the natural logarithm base e of x. And abs x returns the absolute value of integer x. C++ provides functions to generate random numbers, which are declared in the CSTDLIB head file. The random function returns a random integer between 0 and the largest integer the computer can hold, usually rand underscore max. Note that rand function generates the same sequence of numbers every time the program is run. So the strand x function initializes the random number generator with an unsigned integer x, typically the current time. This is used to seed the random number generator so that rand function will produce a different sequence of numbers each time the program is run. To generate a random number in a specific range A to B, you can use the formula I put in the assignment. So, summary uh, to use random uh, function in the strand x the CSTD LIB head file needs to be included. And the strand X is typically used to initialize the random number generator with the current time so that the sequence of random numbers generated by rand function varies with each run of the program. Hand tracing is a manual technique to simulate how a computer executes a program. It involves stepping through the code line by line, predicting the output and keeping track of the variables and their values at each step. It is a powerful tool for debugging, understanding code, and identifying logic or mathematical errors. It helps to visualize the flow of the program and the changes in the variable states. So you read the program line by line as if you are the computer. For each line, update the state of variables in a chart or table, and you predict the output of the program based on your tracing. So here is a hand trace chart for the giving C++ program that calculates the average of three numbers the chart shows the value of the variables num1, num2, num3, and the avg at each step of the program, assuming the user enters the number 10, 20, and 30. When the program starts, all variables are uninitialized. The program prompts the user to enter the first number. Assume the user enters 10, so num1 equals 10. Num2 uninitialized, num3 and the AVG average are all uninitialized. The program prompts the user to enter the second number, assume the user enters 20, so num1 equal 10, num2 equal 20, num3 and the AVG are uninitialized. The program prompts the user to enter the third number, assume the user enters 30, so num1 equal 10, num2 equal 20, num3 equal 30, and the AVG is uninitialized. The program calculates the average as parentheses 10 plus 20 plus 30. The sum of them is divided by 3, so which is 60 divided by 3 equal 20. So num1 equal 10, num2 equal 20, num3 equal 30, and AVG equal 20. The program displays the calculate average to the user. The average is 20. So num1 equal 10, num2 equal 20, num3 equal 30, and AVG equal 20. The program ends with a return zero statement. 
indicating successful execution. So at that time, num one is ten, num two is twenty, num three equals thirty, and AVG equal twenty. So the hand trace chart demonstrates the step-by-step -step execution of the program, showing the values of the variables at each step. It helps to visualize how the program works and how the variables change as the program progresses. We will write a program that calculates the volume, cost, customer price, and the profit of a crate that General Crates INC built. The program prompts the user to enter the dimensions of the crate, the length, the width, and the height. We define two constants, the cost per cubic foot to build a crate, and the price per cubic foot that the company charges the customer. Then after we have this information ready, we can calculate the volume of the crate, the cost the price charged to the customer, and the profit made on the crate. And then the program displays that calculate the volume cost, customer price, and profit to the user. Here are the constants or variables we are going to use in the program. We have two constants, cost per cubic foot. So this is a double type and initialize with a value 0 0.23. So it represents the cost to build a crate per cubic foot. Another constant is a charge per cubic foot. So this is declared as a double and initialized with value 0 0.5. And this represents the amount charged for a crate per cubic foot. Then we also have a uh, double type variables, length, width, height, volume, cost, and the charge. Length, width, height will be the input from the user. Volume, cost, charge, and the profit will be calculated. Here are the steps. Step 1, input create dimensions. The program prompts the user to enter the dimensions of the crate, length, width, and the height in feet. Step 2. Perform calculations. The program calculates the volume of the crate, the cost, customer charges, and the profit made. Then step 3. We will display the calculate data. The program displays the calculated volume, cost, and the charges and profit to the user. The pseudocode provides a step-by-step -step breakdown of the program that calculates and displays the volume, cost, customer price, and the profit of a crate that the company built based on the user's input dimensions and the cost details. So we get the input first, then we do the calculation, then we display the results. The program prompts the user to enter the dimensions of the crate, length, width, and the height in feet. The program calculates the volume of the crate using the formula volume equal length multiply width multiply height. The cost to build a crate, so cost equal volume multiply 0 0.23. The price charged to the customer so the charge equal volume multiply 0 0.5 and the profit made on the crate, the profit equal charges minus cost. We know 0 0.23 and the 0 0.5, those are the constants we defined for the cost and the score per and the score cubic per foot and the charges uh, and the score per and the score cubic per foot. Here is the program. The pound sign include IO string uh, for C in, C out. Then pound sign include IO manip is for the output formatting manipulator like a set W, precision, etc. Then 
inside the integer main function, the cost per cubic foot and the charge per cubic foot are constants that represent the cost to build a cubic foot of the crate and the charge to the customer per cubic foot, respectively. Then we have a variables length, width, height, volume, cost, charge, and profit are used to store the dimensions of the crate, the calculated volume, the cost to build a crate, the charge to the customer, and the profit made on the crate, respectively. All of them are double type. See out lesson lesson set precision to lesson lesson fixed lesson lesson show point. This line sets the output to display numbers with two decimal places. The program prompts the user to enter the dimensions of the crate, which are length, width, and the height in feet. Then the program do the calculations. Volume equal length multiply width multiply height. Calculates the volume of the crate. Cost equal volume multiply cost per cubic foot. Calculates the cost to build a crate. Charge equal volume multiply charge per cubic foot. Calculates the charge to the customer for the crate. Profit equal charge minus cost. Calculates the profit made on the crate. Then the program displays the calculate volume of the crate, the cost to build the crate, the charge to the customer, and the profit made on the crate. Then lastly, return zero indicates that program has executed successfully and is returning control to the operating system. Here are the two examples of the program output. In the first example, the user entered 10 for length, 8 for width, 4 for height, and the program displayed the volume, cost, charge, and the profit. The second the output, um, the user enters different input for length, width, and height, and uh, the program return uh, the corresponding volume, cost, charge, and the profit. From the result, we can see those are two decimal points because we use the C out set precision to fixed show point. So we made it the format in the program so the output will have a matching format as we specified in the code.